Right here on this little motherboard beside me, I have a cooler mounted on it. And it's not just any cooler, it cost me $3 and it's brand new. I think this is the cheapest new cooler I've ever bought in my life. Also comes with a blue LED fan and promises to cool an i7. But actually, can it? Let's find out. So here this cooler is right here on the desk. It's a zero, it's made in China. It's got a heap of Chinese characters on there which I can't read. It says it's super silent and it actually comes with a 12 centimeter fan and it promises 48 CFM, which I'm kind of a little bit skeptical of those numbers, but on the side here it's got compatibility, it comes with a very simple kit that will mount very easily to indeed the uh, LGA 11 5X, LGA 1366 and also 2011 though. I would caution mounting it to both 1366 and 2011 because they have higher TDP CPUs that I honestly think will overload this cooler. Weighing this cooler up, it weighs in at a monstrous 167 grams, which actually for $3 isn't too bad at all. That's without the mounting kit. But here's the mounting kit right here. It's actually the same one that Antec use on their A32. But with that said, we've got this thing mounted on an i7-3770. We've even used the included thermal paste in the box. So let's give it a whirl. So I am shocked. This thing is actually not throttling. So at first I was looking at the graph and I was seeing it and it was going up and up and up and I was like, no way, this is not gonna make it. But then it sort of plateaued out at around 90 degrees. Now it is not optimal to keep your CPU at around these temperatures, especially 24 seven, but at the same time, it's not gonna to be too bad. Uh, so it is getting to 94 degrees, but it is running at pretty low voltage, 1.1 volts, not draining up a lot of heat. And so if you guys are experienced with laptop CPUs, they actually do run a lot of the times constantly at 90 to 95 degrees, uh, somewhere around there. So it's kind of, I guess, you're getting laptop style performance on your desktop PC. And another thing to remember is that this is a stress test and it is loading up the CPU like 100% complete. So usually games won't stress uh, CPUs like this and uh, not nearly as much. So you could see maybe around 80 degrees in games, but we will be testing that. And also I'm gonna let it run until about 30 minutes just to see if it does throttle. So here we are now, we're running the noise test and this thing shocked me. It's running as low as 28 decibels. So they do say it's super silent on the box and it is literally whisper quiet. I cannot hear it at all. I actually had to stop my graphics card here, the fan on that to get a proper reading because before that, this thing was running at about 43 decibel. Mind blowing so far. So here we are now after 30 minutes of testing and I'm completely blown away. So we haven't thermal throttled at all. Max we've hit is 95 degrees. And admittedly it is a little bit of a cooler day. It's not uh, summer. So in summer this thing might actually throttle. So it is 22 degrees. But like we are talking about before, games don't stress the CPU generally anywhere near like Ida64. So what we're gonna do now is load up games, uh, especially PUBG comes to mind, very popular title, pretty CPU intense. But of course, we do need a more powerful graphics card. So we just finished playing PUBG and the results are surprisingly good. This managed to keep the CPU in around the 60 to 70 degree range, and PUBG does utilize quite a bit of CPU. The RX 580 that we're using here was sitting at 100% as well, so that's really good news for this little cooler right here. However, all is not perfect with the $3 cooler. There's a normal one there that is what you'd expect. It works absolutely fine, but then we go over to this one here, and we try to spin it, we can see that the fan blade is not only slowing down quickly, it's also making this really obnoxious noise. So if you do come into this cooler and you do get that noise, there's an easy way to fix it. And that is just what I call the tech yes man grip. That is grab it, then just give it a little bit of a, sort of like a flex always. 
It's really sort of crunching it up there. Perfect. And so we've got Dota 2 loaded up here. We can see the FPS on the 3770 is actually really damn high. GPU's loaded 100%, so we've actually turned the settings down from uh, 1440p high to medium to try and stress the CPU a little bit more. So we'll give this a good 20 minutes of gameplay and then come back and see how the CPU is holding up. So we just finished playing up Dota 2 then and played a full match on the easy bot mode. Of course, it's so easy to get kills on this mode, but Nonetheless, we stress test the CPU because I turned the settings down, as we said before, and that enabled the CPU to get up to about 82 degrees. So I'm actually really comfortable considering that is a worst case scenario for it in games because it's then stressing the CPU a little bit more than the usual gamer would be used to. But regardless, it's still impressive. So let's move over now to a conclusion. So now we've got the verdict on the $3 cooler. And I mean, I think the $3 in itself justifies how impressed I am with this little thing right here. Now, I did get a heap of them, and one of them did have a problem with a noisy fan, rattling fan, and I'd easily fix that by doing the man grip as we saw before, but besides that, I mean, the quality control, I'm sure, is not as good as more expensive companies, but this is a cooler that's coming in usually at a fifth of the price of anything in its league, uh, and the sad thing is I couldn't find this up on AliExpress anymore, so it was $3 for the cooler, $1 for shipping, and it, I mean, it's really lightweight, comes in at 160 grams. And the closest thing I can now find on it is about $4. And it's got a different fan. It looks like it's the same heatsink. So this looks like it's a standardized heatsink design from some factory. Uh, but this, the fan they've put on the one on AliExpress that's available now is a little bit smaller. So I'm not sure if that will handle the i7. But also the other benefit of it was that it was indeed really silent. Like it said on the box, 28 decibels is some of the quietest fans I've ever heard in my life so not a bad job I mean some of these experiments thank you guys for recommending them to me I'm definitely going to keep looking out for things like this I'm glad I did grab a couple of them because they're really going to uh, help if I've got a standardized build especially with an i5 in it and I need to sell it and I need a cooler and it's got a blue LED fan too to go on top I'm just surprised I mean I pay you in Australia like three dollars for a piece of sushi I should just maybe start eating this instead. So with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below. Have you ever tried something like this? If so, what was your experience like? If not, will you give it a shot? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.